In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a new job. The term job in the CAM process refers to any unique setup on the machine. Anytime a part is flipped on the machine to machine a different side, you're going to need to create a new job in your CAM system to establish a new part orientation. If you plan to follow along, open part 4.1 and save a copy of it in your working directory. I will note that even when we do need to move clamps throughout the machining process, this part can all be machined from one orientation or one setup. So we are only going to need one job for this particular example. With that said, let's begin. On the CAM tab of the ribbon toolbar, select the setup icon. The setup defines the stock we're going to use to create the part, as well as the working coordinate system for the part. Let's take a moment to look at each. To start off, you will commonly hear the work coordinate system often referred to as the part datum. All of the code for this job will be referenced back to the working coordinate system as a point of reference, just like our inventor models reference back to an origin. The working coordinate system is displayed in the graphics area with a red, green, and blue arrow. The red arrow indicates the plus x direction, the green arrow indicates the plus y direction, and the blue arrow indicates the plus z direction. We want the blue arrow to be pointing at the spindle of the machine. The reason for this is that we're pointing towards the direction that the tool is coming from. A good way to remember the colors is RGB is XYZ. We'll use the default settings shown under the work coordinate system option. However, look for more information on the work coordinate system in the video 4.2, creating a work coordinate system. Remember, Every selection we're making is relative to the stock, since that's the active field under the origin option. For this example, our datum is going to be at the bottom corner. Remember, I want the positive Z direction pointing towards the spindle of the machine. So by selecting the stem of the blue arrow and the top face of the part, the Z axis will now be placed perpendicular to the top face. Now, I can activate the stock box points by selecting the center of the triad and select the bottom corner. Incidentally, the bottom corner is a common location for the datum anytime you're clamping a part down to a fixture plate. For every part we machine, whether that part has one job or multiple jobs, we do need to create a job to set up the stock in the working coordinate system. With our working coordinate system set up, we're going to skip over the model section because it's used for more complex setups when we want to ensure that our tooling doesn't collide with the work holding devices. Let's now set up the stock. This allows us to simulate our tool path and see how the material is going to be removed. The default option is add stock to sides and top bottom. When we're looking at these various offset values, keep in mind the cutting tool moves along the Z axis and the machine table holds along the X and Y axis. For both the X and Y directions, we're going to leave it at 40 thousandths. This will apply 40 thousandths of an inch to each side of the part, making the part 80 thousandths of an inch larger in total X and Y directions, since 40 thousandths of an inch is applied on each side of the part. Because we're machining this part from plate stock, in the case of the Z direction, we're going to use the zero offset. The drawback to using a zero offset is the top surface of the part and the stock are on top of each other, so things appear a little funny in the graphic display. Sometimes, you may end up using a Z offset of one thousandths of an inch just to improve the graphical display while you're programming your part. So at this point, I hope you have a fundamental understanding of how to set up a job. In the next video, we're going to look at the work coordinate system in more detail.